Now, there are a couple of ways, I suppose, that we can compare these two concepts of creation and evolution. One is in terms of their ability to fit the scientific data. Which one is more scientific than the other? Which one is more factual? And we often, in our work at the Institute for Creation Research, have shown, we believe, that creation fits the scientific data far better than evolution. And therefore, it's a better model within which to understand the world, the history of the world. But another way we can compare the two is through their impact on the world, that is, compare the two in terms of what they produce and what they've accomplished in the lives of people down through the ages as well as right now. Now, uh, we've had quite a bit to say in other times and places about the scientific validity of these two concepts. And what I want to stress just as we introduce this talk, we're not going to be talking about science so much here, except to point out that the evolutionary concept not only has no scientific data really to support it, but also has accomplished nothing useful in science at all. Now, many scientists believe in evolution, and many have tried to determine how evolution works, and they've tried to understand it, and they've utterly failed. They, nobody knows how evolution works. Nobody's ever been able to show any example of evolution taking place from one type to a higher type. So there's no scientific evidence for evolution, but neither has there any scientific benefit resulting from the study of evolution. Dr. Judson, Horace Judson, in an article a few years ago, uh, reviewing the what he called the century of the sciences, showing the tremendous impact and, and really good that science has accomplished in the world, then finally came to this conclusion towards the end of his article. He said, still, even today, certain major sciences offer scant prospect of practical application. Astronomy and cosmology are of little earthly use. Evolutionary theory has not bred a single new species of animal or vegetable, let alone improve the intensity of our pleasures or the intelligence or docility of our children. Evolution has accomplished nothing good in science. And then another statement from a man by the name of Dr. George Marsden, who is a professor of history of science. He said, evolution may have scientific experts on its side, but it does strain popular common sense. It is simply difficult to believe that the amazing order of life on Earth arose spontaneously out of the original disorder of the universe. Not only does evolution accomplish nothing good in science, but it's, it's contrary to common sense to believe that more and more complex organisms could happen just by chance through the evolutionary process. It's contrary to common sense. And he also says this, creation scientists are correct in perceiving that in modern culture, evolution often involves far more than biology. The basic ideologies of our civilization, including its entire moral structure, are at issue. Evolution is sometimes the key mythology or mythological element in a philosophy that functions as a virtual religion. Evolution, basically, he says, is a religion, although he's an evolutionist, and it does have impact in many areas other than biology. Not only all the sciences, but in all the social sciences and the humanities. Just about every discipline in our modern society is affected and permeated with evolutionary thinking. Now, we could go down the list of all the different disciplines that one could study in, in school, in the university, whether it's biology or physics or chemistry, or astronomy, or paleontology, or anthropology, and then we can get over into such fields as history, and sociology, and psychology, and even in the fine arts, music, and art, and history, and literature, and philosophy, and so on. And you'd find that as they're taught today everywhere, they're based on the premise of evolution. So evolution does permeate our whole society. And furthermore, that impact has been uh, devastatingly harmful. Evolutionists like to say that evolution is science and creation is religion. And they sort of ridicule creationists saying that, well, we just believe in, in creation because the Bible teaches it or because we're religious or we're not very good thinkers. We can't really see the scientific evidence. Well, nothing can be further th from the truth than that because evolution is a religion and requires far greater faith to believe than does creation. Let me uh, just in passing note that the great religions of the world, far more of them are based on evolution than is true of creation. All the great ethnic religions, all the great uh, religions of the East, for example, Hinduism and Buddhism and Confucianism and Taoism and animism, as well as all the ancient religions of Greece and Egypt and Rome and all the others, all of them are based on evolution. And by that I mean not modern Darwinism, but the idea that all things have arisen by processes basically innate to the universe the universe of space and time and matter and energy, there was no beginning 
in the, any of these religious systems, they believe the universe is eternal and that its own systems have developed uh, complex uh, systems in the inorganic world and then finally animals and human beings have arisen out of the uh, forces of nature. Now, this is true in practically all of the religions of the world, ancient or modern, with the exception of those few religions, basically just three today, that believe in one creator God. And those three really are Judaism, the religion of the Jews, and Islam, the religion of the Muslims, and Christianity. And the reason these all believe in one God and in creation is because they all believe in the book of Genesis, which is the only religious book of antiquity which begins with God rather than with the cosmos or with the universe already in existence. So really the, uh, the source of our information about creation comes ultimately from the Bible. Now, all the other religions are basically evolutionary religions. And so it's certainly incorrect to say that evolution is based on science and creation on religion because far, many, far more religions are based on evolution than on creation. Well, keep that in mind because now we're going to look at some of the effects and the impacts of the evolutionary worldview or the evolutionary religion upon modern life in this great warfare that's going on between God and evil. Now, many people think that evolution began with uh, Charles Darwin, but of course uh, it goes back much further than Darwin. And I like to compare these two worldviews or two religions in terms of two great trees, the creation tree and the evolution tree. You know, Jesus said, by their fruits you will know them. We can not only compare the two religions in terms of their ability to fit the facts of science, but in terms of the fruits that they produced. Jesus said a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth a good fruit. And so let's look at the fruits that have been produced by these two religious systems and compare them in terms of their effects that way. Well, the creation tree, we're not going to spend time on that because I do uh, cover that subject, the fruits of creationism, in another uh, video lecture called uh, The God Who is Real. But today we want uh, to just to note in passing that all the basic doctrines of the Christian faith, as well as our American system, true education, true history, true science, all basically come from belief in creation. We discuss that more in the other lecture, as I mentioned. But the evolution tree has produced bad fruits. It's produced evil practices. It's produced false philosophies. Now we can go back to Darwin. Now, he didn't begin evolution, but he's the one who gets a lot of credit for it today. And right at the very end of his book on the origin of species by natural selection, he said this. This is the last paragraph of his book. He says, thus from the war of nature, he's talking about a warfare too, from famine and death, the most exalted object which we are capable of conceiving, namely the production of the higher animals, directly follows. If you follow what he's saying there, he says, through the struggle for existence, survival of the fittest, the strong killing off the weak, then those that are fit will survive and finally will produce higher and higher organisms, and eventually they will produce the higher animals, finally man. In other words, he says that by death came man. The Bible, of course, puts it exactly opposite. By a man came death in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12, and many other scriptures too. But you can uh, sort of deduce, even without looking at the evidence, that any philosophy which is based on the idea of struggle and suffering and the strong killing off the weak in order to survive, if that's the basic philosophy that's going to rule the affairs of the world, then that's going to produce some bad systems and bad practices in the world. Basically, it's a world of selfishness. Get what you can while you can, and the devil take the hindmost. That's the basic idea of the evolutionary system. Now, let's look at some of the fruits that this system has produced. In the first place, evolution is the explanation for things without God. If a person wants to be an atheist, he must be an evolutionist. And many people do want to be atheists because they don't want to have to submit to God. And they would like to find some excuse to get away from God. They may call it humanism, and of course if we're going to do away with God, then uh, in effect man as being the highest uh, attainment of the evolutionary process, man himself becomes in effect God, and so that becomes humanism. There is an, asso uh, an association called the American Humanist Association, in which many of the leading intellectuals of our day uh, write and teach 
to which they belong. It was formed in 1933 primarily by John Dewey, who is the architect of our modern public education system, and he has imposed a system of humanism upon the whole educational process today, not only in this country, but actually it's affected practically every country in the world, and also by Julian Huxley, a great atheist scientist who was the first director general of UNESCO, and has had a tremendous impact on the world, and then there were others of like mind that joined with him in forming the American Humanist Association They've listed the things in which humanists believe, and uh, I think it's important to note that the first one is, is evolution. The first tenet of humanism is that religious humanists regard the universe as self-existing and not created. The universe is eternal, it uh, never was created, therefore it has organized itself. And the second tenet is that humanism believes that man is a part of nature and that he has emerged as a result of a continuous process.